Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you how to create a neon sign light effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 18 using an image. And then we'll also talk a little bit about how you can just take the same effect and apply it to text titles inside of Resolve as well. So to get things started, I'm going to take the Resolve logo as a PNG with a transparent background and pop it onto the timeline in Video Track 2. So it shows above the background that I want to have this effect on. So with a transparent background, it means we don't need to worry about anything outside of the logo, which is going to make it easier to filter out the parts we don't want and then keep the lines that we do want to be in order to be the neon sign part of the effect. That said, you could bring in another image that maybe has a background, but you'd have to kind of key it out like you would with a green screen. So let's select this and go over to the Fusion page. And so here you're going to see media in and media out. So media in one, just think of that as your image input, and then media out is your final effect. So in front of media in one, select that, and then right click on the line in front of it, it should turn blue here. And then do add tool, go down to resolve effect stylize and choose edge detect. Uh, when you do this, most of what is not the edges of the logo are going to disappear. And we want to make sure that we remove everything that is not the edges. So we want to keep these bright parts and then we want to filter out anywhere in between which is just kind of filling in those shapes so to do that we'll use a lumic here with edge detect right click on the line in front of it and then do add tool go down to matte and then do lumic here and and once you do that it should look a lot more like a neon sign as these parts are filtered out in any of the filling areas but not quite a hundred percent so with lumic here we're going to take the luminance channel, the low here, and increase this until the parts you need to remove disappear. So for me, that's about 0.3 or 0.31, uh, but depending on your logo, you may have to vary that. So you can see this is a really good selection of the lines of the logo. So that's gonna be our starting place for when we want to kind of animate the brightness of these neon light lines. So in front of Lumic here, let's right click, add a tool, go down to Resolve Effects Color, and then do Flicker Edition. Now with Flicker Edition, it's going to go way too fast with its base speed. So I'm going to lower this down in the speed area to 0.1 before I even test it so that it can slow down a lot. And now let's go to frame zero and hit play. It should be kind of automatically animated thanks to the flicker. So if we hit play here, you can see the brightness is going to kind of go between its lows and its highs in a somewhat random interval, which is good. If uh, you can't see it very well, then you can try increasing the range of the flicker. And so if we go to frame zero and hit play, we can see it's a lot stronger now. So I'll increase it a little more and we can see it's kind of jittery. So I might want to increase the smoothness. So I'm just gonna take the smoothness and increase this all the way to one. And now the increases and decreases of uh, the neon light is a lot nicer, I would say. So another thing you might want to adjust is the color of your sign. So using the Resolve logo, it's just one giant gradient in a circle, and we might want to change that to a single color. So if we take the Lumic here and add a node in front of it, so I'm just going to select the Lumic here, and then up here on the toolbar, I'm going to click on Color Corrector, which is in the second section. And this gives us a color wheel that we can use to adjust the tint of our logo. Uh, but first, we want to start by making everything the same color. So I'm going to click on Edge Detect. And instead of RGB Edges as the mode, I'm going to change that in the inspector to Grayscale Edges, which turns everything white here. So now we can go to the color corrector and we can shift this white towards whatever color we want. So just take the color wheel and change it to the hue that you like. And there you have a monocolor sign. So if you want to increase the strength of the color, you can increase the saturation. Uh, you could also try changing the strength setting. When we do this, you may see that some of the lines uh, from the parts that aren't our main lines kind of show through here. So you can always go back to the Lumic here and then increase the low threshold here of the key a bit until those disappear again. Just make sure that the important lines, the ones you're trying to keep, don't disappear from the image and you should be okay. So if we go to frame zero and hit play here. So when we hit play now, the flickering is not really there anymore uh, since we changed everything into one color. So in the flicker type on the flicker edition node, we could try changing that to flicker gain. Go to frame zero and hit play. And you'll see that we do have a flicker added in for this effect still. So we might tame down the range if we think that's too strong. 
go to frame zero, hit play, and there we have a much more tame flicker for that monochrome neon sign. Some other fun tricks you can do is keyframe the hue adjustment on the color corrector node. So if we go to frame zero here and we keyframe it here at the pink, go to some point in the future, let's say 60 frames, which for this timeline I think is one second. And let's just change the color here to a different hue that we might want to try, like this light blue. And now that gives us a second keyframe. You'll see these white notches on the timeline. And that means it's going to animate between those two values over that period of time. So let's go to frame zero and hit play. And then you'll see how it shifts from purple to blue. And you also see that animation kind of occur over here on the right. So you can keep going with that and change it to other colors. So we could shift it to yellow from 60 to 120 just by adding another keyframe. And so that's one way that you can keep adjusting the colors across the duration of your animation. So if you just want to test and see if everything's working correctly, just go back over to your edit page and play the animation with your background. So if I go to frame zero here and hit play, then uh, you can see the flicker and you can see the color adjustment. One other way that you can adjust the brightness instead of the flicker node, if you prefer, uh, is to actually adjust the gain on the color corrector nodes. So we would keyframe that more or less the same way we did with the color hue. So I'm going to click on flicker edition, turn that off to disable the base flicker, click on color corrector, go to frame zero, and let's keyframe the gain at 1.0, the standard value here. Go to, let's say, frame 60 and raise or lower that, which is going to create another keyframe. So just make it as dark or bright as you want it to be here. And then go to another point in the timeline and maybe reset the gain back to 1.0. So that's going to create three keyframes. So it's going to increase the gain and it's going to lower that. And that's going to make it brighter. And then it's going to make it darker as it goes back to its base value. Uh, lastly, with those keyframes, you may not like it to progress in a linear fashion where no matter what part, no matter what frame you're on, it's increasing or decreasing the brightness at the same amount. So if you click on the spline editor, you can add an ease curve to those keyframe points and make it slow to animate at the start of a keyframe and, and then slow to end as it approaches another keyframe and keep the bulk of the animation in the middle. And that can make your movement look a little bit smoother. So let's look for the gain setting here for the color corrector. Okay, master RGB gain, I believe that's what we want. We can see we have a linear graph here. So I'm just going to select these three keyframe points, right click, go to ease, and then do in out cubic. So now you see this gives us more like a roller coaster rather than sharp lines. So if we go to frame zero here and hit play, most of the gain changes occur halfway in between the keyframe points, not at the start and end. You might not be able to see it right there because we didn't increase the gain enough. So just to demonstrate, let's just take the gain at the second keyframe. That's 60 frames in for me. And I'm just going to set it to 10 here, which is probably going to be way too bright. But let's go to frame zero and hit play. And you might be able to see a little bit more how the ease curve helps smooth out the transition. But it might still be too subtle of an effect to really see it. But anyway, if it's not noticeable, you don't really even have to do the ease curve thing. Just wanted to point that out. So I'm going to reset that to 2.5. And we can go to the edit page, hit play, and just kind of see our glowy sign, which is really just an edge detect outline of our original logo. If you want, add in the flicker edition back in. There's no reason you can't have manually increasing the gain and then have the flicker as extra lighting. So now you just got to kind of play around with it and get it to the settings that you like. Okay, so I also mentioned that I would show how to take this and turn it into the same effect, but with a text title. So it's really simple. So if we take these same nodes, we can copy and paste them onto a title effect. So I'm going to select all of these, hit Control C to copy them. Now let's go to the edit page. I'm going to take the background and expand it so we have room to add a title. Now uh, let's find titles, text plus. I'll just drop this in here. So we have the text plus title. I'm going to write tutorial here. Give it whatever font you want. Just creating the title as a standard title would be. So with this selected, we can take this text plus title and just jump over to the Fusion page. And we're going to see a very similar setup, except instead of media in, we see template. So I'm going to control V to paste in all those nodes from earlier. And now all we need to do is disconnect template from media out, feed template into edge detect, and uh, the final media out uh, we'll make that this one on the right. So I'm going to remove that and then connect this in here. And there you see our outline text 
with the color added in. So we may see, because the text is originally white, that uh, the white brightness from the original text is still showing way too strongly here. Uh, so if we want to adjust that, and we could also use this for the logo effect as well, uh, one thing we can try is to click on the color corrector and increase the strength to 20, which is going to drastically increase this hue color change. Or we can hit Control-Z to undo that, click on Edge Detect, and let's go into the detection and lower the brightness down. So if we bring this down to something like 1.4 from the 2.5, we can see uh, this actually removes a lot of that white brightness and lets the color change show through. So now if we go to frame zero and hit play with our effects already added in, the color change is a lot more noticeable here and we don't really have that white brightness overshadowing everything, which is pretty cool. Feel free to combine those two. So if I click on color corrector, then I can just change the strength to five and the color is once again, much stronger than it was before. Uh, one extra thing I wanted to mention is that if you do have to lower your brightness down in order to get the color to show through more, so lowering this down, uh, you might need to adjust your luma here to reflect that. So we play around with this to get the right setting. But in doing so, if I take this contract expand back to the default, then you can see that adjusting the settings may actually make part of the image disappear. So if you have to make adjustments and you don't see everything, try increasing the contract expand setting up. And what this will mean is that the lines that do exist and were picked up, it'll try to make them fully expanded and visible again. So by doing that, you're able to get the color changes, but also keeping the shape intact, even though the brightness on the edge detect is lower than it was before. And this will, of course, make your color more as it should be very vibrant for a neon sign. So playing around with the effect a little bit more, I also decided to add in a glow node for the light to make it look more like it's actually emitting light from these lines. So to give an example that back on the node graph, after everything, including Flickr edition, if you still have that, uh, you can just throw on a glow node right before media out. And then if I enable that, that gives a little soft blurry light around all the parts of the lines which are emitting the light and you can control how far you want it to spread out so i took the spread and lowered it quite a bit uh, the default's kind of like this if you lower it down then it's going to be very close to the original shape maybe somewhere in between could be a little better 0 0.157 seeming pretty good for me so if you just take that and copy it over to any other clips that you need the effect on just control the spread and on the logo, let's add that in again. You can see here that for the logo, I decided that I'm just going to return it to that gradient color because that is very iconic to the DaVinci Resolve logo. So I think that just looks cooler in the end. And if you put everything together, then this is basically what you end up with for a neon light sign effect. So that's everything I used to create this effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. I hope all of you learned a bunch from this video. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris and I will see all of you in my future video content.